Welcome. Today we are going to be talking about eating with your new stomach. You have had weight loss surgery or you're thinking about having weight loss surgery or you're just curious how weight loss surgery works. Um, today I'm going to answer the question, how did you get past not being able to eat as much how much has having a smaller stomach affected your everyday eating habits? So I'll give you guys a couple tips or tricks that I have had that have helped me be successful with my sleeved stomach, as they call it, um, with my sleeve. And so we'll get into that. The first thing is I learned very quickly that eating on a schedule is very important. And I say this for multiple reasons, half at the beginning, because it's very hard to intake the amount of food and water that you need to be intaking because your stomach is so small, you don't feel like eating or drinking at all. But on the other half of the coin is the fact that you come to a point where you realize you can eat more if you eat more often. And so mentally from the get go, one of my number one tips is to eat on a schedule. Now this doesn't have to be rigid, like I can only eat these times of day, but that is kind of mentally what I have done in the process of figuring out that if I eat every three or so hours that I can get in all of my nutritional needs in that amount of time with sips of water in between. And we will also talk about how important your water intake is, but at the same time, how hard it is to intake all of your water, especially early on. I am now almost four years post-op from sleeve surgery. So some things over time your body gets adjusted to. So I'm gonna remember back to what it was like early on. Um, but when you are eating on a schedule, it is, enabling you to take in the especially the amount of protein that you need on a consistent basis because protein will fill you up fast carbohydrates have a way of being they're called you know empty calories a lot of times you can eat more and you realize these are called slider foods for a reason because you can intake more without feeling as full as you do when you take in protein rich foods or meats um, and so for me i have discovered that eating six times a day is what is best and more sustainable long-term for me. Everybody's different. You have people who do inter um, intermittent fasting, but for me, six times a day mentally helps me get through the day. I know what's coming. I'm gonna have my breakfast, my morning snack. This is how it's all set up in my fitness pal. I have a, a, a breakfast, a morning snack, a lunch, an afternoon snack, a dinner and an evening snack. And this is how I have been organizing my food now for four years. And so within that, you can take in however many calories that it is that you need for that time in order to get through the day. When you are early on in your surgery and you've just had your surgery and you cannot eat very much, it's okay to eat more frequently if you need to get in your food and your protein goals. Um, and so we can talk about macros in another video potentially, but definitely consult with your doctor on how many grams of protein you're supposed to be taking in, um, because otherwise you'll just feel weak. You, it, it'll be a struggle, um, if you're not hitting your protein and water goals. And so in the beginning, after you have your sleeve surgery done, one thing that is completely different than anything you've probably ever experienced in your life is how you eat and drink and how they are no longer something that you do together at the same time. This is the weirdest thing. And there are some very awkward social situations that I have discovered in regards to this, but I will tell you, most doctors do recommend not drinking 30 minutes before you eat or 30 minutes after you eat. There's a great video on YouTube that explains this. Basically, in summary, when you have food in your stomach and you put a liquid on it and with it, at the same time, it pushes the food through your system faster. And so it takes you more food to feel full while you're eating. 
from personal experience, I have also discovered it just hurts. This is something that even four years out, I'm still really strict about because I've been in a few situations where I have been eating, I've taken a drink of something and my stomach just hurts. It's just not something I do. I eat, I let my food digest for 30 minutes for years. I set a 30 minute timer on my phone and I knew, okay, now it's time to eat. I have not personally discovered that issue before my food comes. So I could sip on something and then my food comes and I eat. So the before 30 minutes, that's just gonna be something that you discuss with your doctor. You personally figure out what works for you. But the moment I start putting food in my mouth, the drink is pushed to the side for at least 30 minutes and after I'm finished eating. And so that is actually something that I suggest to people who aren't even haven't even had weight loss surgery. It just makes sense that the more you drink while you eat, the more food you're washing through your system, the harder it is for you to feel full off of what you're eating. So if you're on your own weight loss journey and you're not even considering weight loss surgery, it's a simple, it's a simple thing to try to not drink. Now it's weird. Socially, we're used to having that glass of water or whatever it is that you drink with your food when you're at a restaurant and the server brings you a water and it just sits there full the entire time. Sometimes I don't even order last night. I went out to dinner and I was with somebody and they ordered a drink and the lady looked at me, but I knew the food was going to be coming immediately. And she's like, what would you want to drink? And I said, I don't want anything to drink. And she was like, and, and, and that's okay. Like sometimes I just get the water and I just let it sit on the table. I'll take a few sips, but then it depends on how long we're going to be sitting there. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Your drinking and eating habits will change. Now, with the eating schedule, on a schedule, you'll discover that mentally it helps you not graze. So grazing is a huge part of weight gain, especially for me. I'm only ever on this YouTube channel going to be able to explain to you my own personal experience. I am not a professional I am not a doctor. I can only tell you what I know from personal experience. And for me, calorie intake through grazing on foods, grabbing a handful of something while you're cooking, these are habits that can add calories into your day, sometimes unknowingly. And so eating on a schedule was something that also helped me to realize I am getting all of my food needs in six times a day. A lot of times you're finished eating, and when I, I talked about the drink aspect because when you're on a schedule, let's say you start your morning with your breakfast, you eat your breakfast, and then you have to wait 30 minutes to drink whatever it is you're going to drink, your coffee, your protein shake, your water, and then you've waited 30 minutes. I, there's a three-hour window in between the times that I eat. I've only got two and a half hours now to intake all of my water that I need to be intaking before I go on to the next meal. So then when I eat my morning snack, I've got to take that 30 minute break. And so in order to get in your food and your drinks, eating on that schedule helps a ton. Um, but you just need to make sure you're drinking in your windows of time frame. I remember somebody telling me um, that they'd had weight loss surgery. They said, I feel like I eat and then I have that 30 minute window after and then the 30 minute window before that I'm not supposed to be drinking the time that I can intake my fluids is smaller. And it's true. It is. And it's just something that you get used to. You get into a rhythm. It gets easier over time. Um, but when you finish a meal and you mentally know, I'm going to be eating in three hours. Now, if you finish a meal and you're still hungry, go ahead and get yourself a little something more. But when you've had sleeve surgery, generally speaking, as long as you've allotted your calories throughout the day. So for instance, if you're eating let's just do a, a round number of 1800 calories, 1800 calories in six meals. That's 300 calories per meal. You can get pretty sati pretty satisfied and satiated off of a 300 calorie meal after having weight loss surgery, depending on what content of food that you're intaking. So you eat, you have your 300 calories and then you drink your water and you know, if I'm going to start to get hungry again, it's only going to be two and a half hours until I eat. And so that's how it gets me through this, this, you know, way of being able to not graze and not intake the calories. Another tip that I'll add to this 
is pre-planning. Not everybody is a fan of food logging and calorie counting, and that's okay. Again, this is just what works for me. I have been using MyFitnessPal my entire journey. I have logs back from when I was 295 pounds, and in my diary, it still shows me the last like 10 years. And so for me, it's really fun. I can go and look at a picture of myself on any given date over the last 10 years and tell you about how much I weighed in that picture. And so I've been tracking through my fitness pal this entire time before weight loss surgery, after weight loss surgery, I am counting my calories today because I'm trying to get back on track. I don't count every day, but when you do count calories, it is super helpful to have the my fitness pal and to plug it in. And my tip for that is to put your food in at the beginning of the day for the entire day or even the night before. There are a lot of nights where I'll lay in bed and I'll be thinking through where I'm going tomorrow, what I'm doing, who I'm going to be with. And it's just like budgeting your food. Okay. I know we're going to go out to have a big lunch with so-and-so for their birthday celebration. And we're going to go to this restaurant and then I can kind of adjust my morning and evening calories to be based off of what it is I'm eating for lunch that day. And so the most successful days that I have are my pre-planned days. I know what food I have in my refrigerator. I know where I'm going to be for the day, especially if you're going off to work and you need to pack your lunch, having it in your food log the night before. It just feels like you're starting off the day And mentally, when you have, you know, your life revolves around food. Everybody's life revolves around when we're going to eat, what we're going to do. A lot of times when you're working out, how how do you make sure you eat the right foods before your workout, after your workout? And so having a plan, a plan is, brings about a lot more success because then you can say, sometimes I have a sweet tooth and I will be eating my salad for lunch and I'll think to myself, you know what, this afternoon I get to have one of my protein bars that I really, really like and it's got a chocolate flavor to it and it's something that's going to be that pick me up in the middle of the day when I'm starting to feel tired or I know I get to have my my caffeine kick in the afternoon, um, but it's in my diary. And so right now my salad, my chicken, my whatever it is that you're eating, it's a part of a bigger plan. It's a part of making sure you're getting in all of your macros for the day. So also pre-planning is another big tip that I have. So those are a few of the tips and tricks that I've learned. I'm sure there are many more. Feel free to comment below whatever it is that you have used, any tips or tricks that you have. There's a lady I followed on YouTube that she only had small plates in her house. Like she bought all these really cute little tiny tea plates And she got rid of every other big plate in her house. And for me, that was something I saw on YouTube that inspired me. And now I eat on small plates. And anytime I'm at a Goodwill, I'll find a cute little plate just because it's cute. And it it keeps me motivated to keep my portion small. When you have a big plate in front of you, like the plate sizes that we normally use, and you're putting your portions on there when you're eating less, there's something mental that happens where you're like, I don't feel like I'm satisfied because my plate's not full. But if you're eating off cute little plates and you put all that you're going to eat for the day onto that plate, then you feel better about finishing it, accomplishing it, and knowing that you ate less than you normally do. So there's tons of tips and tricks in, in the, in the weight loss world that, so I would love to hear what you guys have down in the comments. Feel free to ask anything and, um, thanks for following.